to the, um, uh, to the model and uh, began to build something that I thought would help students understand uh, new technologies if they were um, researching any aspect of uh, social network theory or um, ICT and application to language learning or learning theory or indeed learning and leadership and management. So those uh, glosses, if you like, uh, I just added around the side. And of course, the other factor that's not mentioned here is individual longitudinal growth over, let's say, a 10 or 20 year period or a three year period or whatever. You know, what happens to the learner in the middle of that model as they grapple with issues like this? Um, that model, by the way, formed the introduction or part of the introduction to a book called the uh, Sage Handbook of E-Learning Research, where we tried to grapple with, uh, published in 2007, tried to grapple with uh, students who were um, trying to research um, digitized and multimodal aspects of communication. That's a lot of students, actually. Now, I think the problem with this is partly a matter that linear print-based format may not be suitable for the subject matter of the thesis, which may require a different logic and a different rhetorical shape. For example, a research study on complexity theory or, or, or on a problem with many variables may require different points of entry, allowing the reader or user, uh, and indeed the designer of it, to choose which point of entry and which navigational route through the material best suits their ends. It's probably easiest to think of this in terms of a, a web-based submission, where uh, you, um, unlike, I, I've seen people do web-based presentations, unlike PowerPoint, it's not sequential. You can uh, go in and out of, if you like, let's call them chapters or sections uh, of, of the web-based design. So the order in which you read it is not determined uh, by the creator or the composer. It's determined by the reader. And this, if you um, go back to this spectrum I kind of began to, to, to flag up earlier, it's possible to imagine a spectrum of possibilities for the doctoral thesis from conventional formats at one end, and by conventional again I mean two hard copies in a series of chapters following a particular um, design uh, that's, that's largely conventional. It can, it can be moved around uh, by uh, post-structurists or post-modernists who kind of change the order or put interludes in and write in different ways. But it's still basically print, print-based. That's at one end of the spectrum. And at the other end of the spectrum is, as I said, a silent film, a musical composition, an exhibition, uh, and, and so on. But in the middle is where most of us inhabit, which is on the spectrum. And you can imagine different degrees of possibility uh, on that spectrum. They're largely hybrid practices. So let, let me give you some examples of those. Uh, someone I supervised in collaboration with Middlesex University, Rebecca Sinker, uh, tried to answer the question, to what extent is the internet an appropriate medium for learning through and about contemporary visual art? Uh, it was a case study of the Digital Art Resources for Education project. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a link uh, to that. I think that website's been, been archived now. But uh, what her submission was, under the Middlesex regulations, was 50% um, the website, which was created over two or three years, and 50% written commentary and the more classic, if you like, uh, kind of thesis that most of us would be used to. But only 50% of it. But part of that 50% included a sort of log of the making of the website, but rather like uh, an engineer would include that sort of log in, 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 the, in that making. And of course it included evaluation, interviews with students, uh, and uh, literature review and all the other kind of more conventional elements you would expect. Absolutely terrific thesis. She's now head of young people's programs at the Tate Gallery, and a very good thinker about um, arts education. Kang Bielis is slightly more conventionally along the spectrum. Someone I um, 
I supervised over, over the last few years, who did a study of the emergence of study manga in Japan, a historical and semiotic approach. But that turned out, as a thesis, rather like a coffee table book, beautifully produced, in, nevertheless in conventional format, but with a huge number of illustrations and uh, bilingual in parts. So quite an unusual look, but certainly exploiting, if you like, rather conventionally, the possibility of uh, downloading images, sourcing them, and collecting them in, in a conventional thesis. And my own son, just to take another example out of uh, engineering, when I looked at his dissertation for his master's uh, a few years ago, I was surprised how few words there were in it. But that's the way engineers operate. He said, you know, I use the minimum number of words to get a building put up. That's, uh, that's the sort of engineer's approach. And the thesis on gear design was largely computer programming, mathematical formulae, uh, diagrams, photographs, uh, and a few words. But that it was clearly multimodal, abs uh, absolutely good, um, sort of way people in other fields operate. So, but what are, the, what are the implications for us in our field, in education, social science, leadership, and management? I think the infrastructure for the support of the sort of new uh, doctorates I'm, I'm just glancing at are, first of all, in the conception and development of the topic, which is largely in the students' hands and in their supervisors' hands in the early stages of the shaping of the project. Then the onus, of course, is always with the student, but is very much on the supervisor to be up to speed in uh, as to the possibilities that the students, uh, the, that what the student is trying to do has the appropriate form and shape to allow them to do it, to do it to the best of their ability. And I would make a distinction here about research for, uh, um, let's say, um, multimodality in new technologies and communication, and research about. Uh, about that field, because most research is about it uh, in, in, in universities. It, it's again, it's capturing traces of the, the heat of the creative activity, if you like, or the social patterning. Whereas research for it is often used in uh, design companies, software companies, uh, etc., to uh, inform a new product. But I think it's good for those things, research about research for to come together and, and possibly for universities to move a little closer to research for a field than to research about. Because in this fast changing field, research about is going to be out of date very, very quickly. Um, formative assessment during the process of research, of course, when, for example, in upgrade moments, uh, a student is putting something forward that's rather unusual or pushing the boundaries of convention, you need people who are sensitive to and open to what the student is trying to do and to, of course, provide it with the rigorous attention you would provide any kind of uh, research proposal coming forward at that stage, but be open that it may not take conventional format. And perhaps, you know, those of us who examine, perhaps the responsibility is also on us to be open to examine the student according to the paradigm that the student is operating in, not according to some set notions of what we think doctoral uh, study looks like, as long as, of course, it's within the regulations and guidance of the particular university in which it's being examined. I'm looking at Michael just to remind myself of that, because that is absolutely critical. I'll show you something on that later. And then once the research, in whatever form, is... Uh, Completed, it's a question of storing it. How do you store it? How do you archive it? How do you make the results available to a wider public? Well, we already know uh, in the UK that the British Library offers free access to full texts of UK theses if your university library has signed up to that uh, particular subscription. Um, and electronically available theses, the British Library tells me, are over 100 times more likely to be read and theses available in paper format. Multimedia, i.e. multimodal and digitized data, may be incorporated into your work for the British Library, for the ethos lodging, as it were, and data sets can be attached as well. 
in general and here's how one of my colleagues summed up this